Okay. So we get to Om again. <laughs> so very kindly um, join with me and let us do three Ohms. And as you do them, let yourself just open up and be just open, like feel yourself like being hollow almost, you know, like a you're you're a musical instrument and your breath is just moving through you, making the sound. Right? Let's see if we can do that. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm having a little trouble with all my stuff here. Allergies. Allergies. Oh. Oh. Okay, so we now uh, we know that our word for September is the word freedom and indecisiveness, which each person on this planet suffers from. And, you know, I'm not talking about, you know, do I want chocolate or do I want vanilla? <laughs> not that kind of indecisiveness. I'm talking about that deeper part that can really create us to stall out. Where we're like, I just, I just don't know which way to go. And we probably don't even see it as like indecisiveness. Um, but what is that all about? How do we get to that, that point? So somewhere inside of us, there's a, a, a difference in the way that we view, not just like how things will turn out, but there's a part of us that feels like this is the decision my heart wants to make. This is the decision my head wants to make. Because we talk like that a lot. We say our heart and our head. So we're talking about two parts of our, ourself. We think it's like uh, analytical or intellectual, analytical and emotional. But just so that since we're talking today about meditation and meditation about how we can be aware of self-correcting ourself in a meditative way to improve our life. So as we're talking about this, it's important for us to know again that every thought that we think moves through our brain, our beautiful brain, and all of our nerves are all connected with our brain. <clears throat> every nerve right down to my little pinky finger, every single organ, every everything is getting messages all the time from the brain and the brain gets them from the mind. Wait, what? Why is she saying it that way? Because we always say the brain is telling the body what to do. Who's telling the brain what to do? The brain is an organ, just like everything else. Brain is an organ, the liver is an organ, right? We've got all these organs going on. Magnificent magnificent organ absolutely so we want to keep it healthy so in order to keep that brain healthy not only do we need a healthy diet and healthy exercise clean air clean water we need clean thoughts and the brain isn't thinking those thoughts up it's processing the thoughts based on experiences but it doesn't originate them that's you. And you li you have been alive longer than your body. And you will continue to live long after your body. Your body, your brain, your body is this magnificent vehicle that you must have 
if you're going to walk around on planet Earth. <laughs> you can't be here just as a spirit. You'll be in the atmosphere, but you can't have a human incarnation at that time unless you have a body. Apparently, bodies are not so easy to get. That there are, I don't know, apparently like millions upon millions of souls that would like to be an incarnation right now. But it isn't happening. There's quite the order to the entire universe. It's not chaotic. So here we have these bodies and we are temporarily housed in these bodies so that we can have this incarnation. So what houses the what's in the body? Body is our, my spirit. And my spirit has the memory of every past life I've ever had. If I were a dinosaur, <laughs> those memories would be locked in there too. <laughs> no matter what I've been, if I've lived on another planet, if, if I've been, you know, a creepy crawly thing, if I've been a flower, if I've been a fairy, whatever it is. It's all locked with me still. It's part of my soul. Everything that I've ever been is collective. But now it's all living inside this body. So that can create some chaos. <laughs> Why do I do that? Why do I love this? It smells so wonderful. No, oh, I hate that smell. You know, we're all so different from one another. We've all had very different experiences. And now the current body that you have today is somehow or another related to these other past lives. What? Mm, yeah, you don't just get some random body. Mm -mm. No, everything is in relationship to everything else. Just like every plant that there is started out as a seed. That seed came from another plant. You can't just suddenly go like, I want that to be an apple. <laughs> If it's a peach seed, it's a peach seed. It has to go through evolution to become something else. It has to change and change and change and change. So I'm saying this to you so that you really see the difference between your, your spirit or your soul, your consciousness, whatever you want to call that part of you, is different than your body. Because the biggest difference is your soul doesn't die. Apparently it wasn't born. Uh, there's something to think about. <laughs> No, it's, it, there's an eternal quality to it. But it is right now, in this particular body, having this particular experience as a human being on this particular planet. So, what we're working on today is being able to help ourselves to understand our relationship from our mind with our body more. So we do that by one of the ways is, first of all, really being able to be consciously aware of our body, particularly like through the day. And you might think, but I am aware of our body. Sometimes we're not aware of our body till we stub our toe. <laughs> and then we're like, no, then you know, <laughs> you're in your body. <laughs> you know, that sometimes we're just not aware of it. We're like, oh, yeah, OK, get blah, 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 do this, go do that. But as we become aware of our body, we can even notice the most subtlest of changes. As I've been getting a little bit older, <laughs> I've noticed a lot of interesting changes. <laughs> I'm like, hmm, it didn't used to be that hard to do that. <laughs> so instead of thinking, oh, oh that's just my, you know, I don't want to be upset with myself. I don't. I don't want to be upset with other people either, but I don't want to be upset with myself. I live with myself 24-7. <laughs> so I help myself to be able to go, okay, we got to make some changes. Because I do things differently now. When I was in my 20s, I could move in a particular way. And now that, you know, I'm 69, I do things in a different way. Because I call it gravityitis. <laughs> That gravity that we live in, you know, it just pushes everything down, you know, stay on the planet. And, you know, it's, you know, it kind of has its wear and tear on our bodies. 
So what we want to do is to help ourselves to become even more aware of our bodies so that we can understand that as we're aware of where there's imbalance, I work on balance a lot. It's something that I do because of a car accident that I was in so many years ago that this half of my body doesn't have the same kind of balance that the right side of my body has. And I'm left-handed. You would think it would be the other way. <laughs> but there we have it. So I work on balance because of injuries, right? So my mind is always looking for ways to compensate for that. <clears throat> so I help myself to be able to feel it, to be aware of it. And by doing that, it helps me to not ignore it. It helps me not to pretend it isn't happening. It helps me not to be ashamed that it's happening. It helps me not to blame. If that wouldn't have happened, I wouldn't be feeling this way. How many times do we have to say those things to ourselves? It never, it never leaves us feeling better. It just makes us start to think about, oh yeah, that happened and now this is happening. And yeah, blah, blah, blah. yeah I'm feeling really bad. <laughs> it can make me feel victimized, but who has time for that? We all have things that we've gone through. Now, if you have gone through violence and it has harmed you, like, of course it's harmed you, violence. It's still the same premise, but it requires a lot more compassion. It's still about being self-aware and self-compassionate. It's just a really big task. So I want to say that so that there's that compassion that's there. Because what we're working on is we're working on having an understanding about everything's in relationship to everything else. And there's just sometimes some stories that we have that are horrifying, actually. And it makes us feel like Is what I'm saying to you valid for people who are going through that rather than people who aren't going through things like that? It's always the same. The answers are always the same. We have to apply self-compassion though. We have to look at ourselves and not blame ourselves, not blame others. This is not a process of blaming. This is not a process of going back and figuring it all out analyzing the heck out of it. This is a meditation practice, which means we have to empty out. So if you've had something that's harmed you and it's in your body, no matter where it came from, you have to really act with dignity with yourself, with compassion. And to know that you are the biggest part of any healing work that you do. So since the saboteur of freedom that we're using for September is indecisiveness, let's talk a little bit about that because I'm not talking about, like I said, do you want do you want cream in your coffee or oat milk? You know, that, that's this much of a indecisiveness. I'm talking about the part of us that says things like, oh, you got this, you're a good person. Oh, no. Never happens. Why should I bother with getting my hopes up? Now, I show it to you in a kind of dramatic way so that you can see that I'm showing you how the energy can move through us. Just a thought. Just a thought of, yeah, I've got this. You see, there's this, I want to stand up straight. I want to sit up straight. I've got this. Yeah, yeah. Even my head is like, oh, yeah. Right? No. 
doesn't work out. My breath gets really small then. I can feel it. When thoughts like this of degradation that comes from myself to myself, it makes me not breathe deeply and rhythmically. It makes me run out of breath. So I can't have that peace that I want to practice. So I can sit and do a meditation practice, we'll say for 10 minutes, and then I can get right back up and be right back to my old bad habits. So we want to help with that particular issue. So if, as you have a meditation practice over here, and even if you don't, we're going to talk about that in a few moments. What you want to do is help yourself every day to be aware of the integration between the thoughts that you have and the effects that they're having on your body. Regardless if you have injuries, you have illness, whatever it is, we're not going to go really deep and talk about where all those things came from right now. We're looking at how you can treat yourself in the moment to find center. Because no matter how bad you're feeling or how good you're feeling, we still want to be in, in this place of being centered. So... <clears throat> First thing is awareness. So what I'd like for you to do is just let yourself, as, as I'm speaking, just kind of like tune into your body and just ask yourself, where's it feeling tight? Make it a little adjustment. You know, where are you feeling? Where are you feeling your tightness? Your shoulders, your hips, your feet. Where is that tightness? Where do you have pain? Now what I want you to do is close your eyes. Keep your legs uncrossed. Sit up straight, head looking straight forward out. I want you to be aware of your body. Be aware where there is pain but also be aware of where there is not pain. Let yourself scan. You can do it like from the top of your head. Just go up into your top of your head. Let's do it. Feel your ears and your jaw. Let yourself feel your eyes, your eye sockets, your nose as well as your mouth. How does it feel inside of your mouth? Cheeks and chin, tension or no tension? Just make little notations of where today you feel pain, pain and or peace in your head, your face, and now into your throat and your neck. This is a very vital place. As we sit here, I'm very aware of my neck. <laughs> and your throat. Be very aware of your throat. And moving on down into your shoulders, which also includes your arms and your hands. You're just scanning. Don't do anything about it right now. It's awareness first. Awareness first. You're making little notations of where you're feeling imbalances. Little to a lot. And very kindly also be aware of your upper back and your chest. Be aware of your lungs and your breathing. Be aware of your heart 
Can you actually feel your heart beating? Let us be very, very quiet together to generate this energy to support one another as we feel our hearts. Please be very, very quiet and focus on your heart, the physical heart. For right now, the physical heart. Do you feel it beating? I sometimes feel my heart beating in my eyes. Or my ears. Where do you feel your heart beating? It's important to feel your heart. It is your drum, your rhythm. It is the place for shamanic healing. It's your rhythm, boom, 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 boom. Let yourself move even deeper down your back, your mid to low back. Do you feel any weakness, pain? Be aware of it. We're not really making changes just yet. We're just being aware of it, making notes in our mind's eye, scanning our organs, our stomach, our liver, our intestines, just feeling, scanning. Deeper from our low back. Allow yourself to feel your low back and feel the nerves moving from your low back down your left and right hips, down your thighs. Feeling your thighs, your hips, your knees, the front and back. Calves. Tightness there? Tightness is a type of pain. Heels, toes, instep. With this scan, now, very kindly, allow yourself to breathe deeply in and out, very deeply. You do it in your own rhythm as I speak. Remember, breathe deeply in your own rhythm. And send this breath to the parts that you marked at being out of balance. However you want to do it, you can speak to yourself, I am breathing into all parts of my body that are out of balance. I am breathing in compassion. I am breathing out compassion. I am aware. And also allow yourself to breathe into the parts that are healthy and strong so that they continue to be healthy and strong. And very kindly, <clears throat> follow my voice back and open your eyes when you can.
it's sort of like um, what we were doing there is sort of like a sound bath because we're using the vibrations of our thoughts of peace to move through our body because every thought that you think has a vibration and that vibration moves through your mind into your brain and from your brain down into every part of your body. So in your body, there are memories that are there. Very good memories, very bad memories, and everything in between. There are men memories that are locked in your body that you consciously don't remember. And some of them are older than this lifetime. But by sitting quietly and breathing into us first, all the places that need love, that need breath, and then following up with those places that are strong, to keep them strong, to keep them in a way where they serve you so well. You're helping yourself to see the connection, the relationship between your mind and your body, including your brain. Our nerves are very important. They are, are uh, they're our internet. <laughs> They're always sending messages to the body that's relative to the thoughts. It's true that, you know, when we have things going on with our thighs or our hips, there's certainly something that's impeding our movement. And it's usually not just one thing. But if you feel those in your, in your thighs or in your hips, Maybe you might want to help yourself with some affirmations of, I move freely. I walk freely. My path is clear. But if you just do it like, yeah, my path's clear. Okay, yeah, I did those affirmations. It, it means little to nothing. You have to say it with integrity. Because it's the truth you know that there's pathways that are open. And you're helping yourself to those pathways that are open. You're sending that energy to keep them open by making that affirmation. I am moving forward. And the pathways that are kind of closed, they're getting the message that we're moving forward so that they can strengthen and open up. And I'm talking about pathways of thought, but the pathways of thought move through every aspect of our body. Low back, who hasn't had some low back discomfort? That's a lot of feelings over a long period of time that add up there and they make the back, the low back heavy. And it makes it so that you feel unsupported. It can make you feel weak, like you can't move forward also. So notice that I'm not saying go in there and look at all the thoughts and all the memories. This is the practice of healing. You don't have to identify everything while we're empowering the process of our thoughts in relationship with our body. We're looking at the solution, not the incident. We don't want to focus on this happened Therefore, this bad thing is now happening in my body. We're not looking for that. We're seeing, not looking. Looking is different than seeing. So if you feel in your low back that there's a weakness or pain that's there, you want to send it as much compassion as you can. If you're always only saying, my back is killing me, Well, nothing more needs to be said there, right? Or we say it's just such a burden or it's so weak or it really hurts. Of course it does. And it's all right to express that. But during a moment of healing like this, we're not looking for culprits outside or in here. We're not looking for shaming and blaming. This is a meditation practice. 
So when you sit and you have a part of your body that's in pain or it's in a weakened state, you want to practice sitting, feeling it, and moving as much beautiful light into it, self-compassion, as you can. So then as you're walking and you feel yourself out of balance and it hurts, it hurts so much that you want to stop. You want to help yourself in that moment to send that healing energy in there. Now, you may say, yeah, well, it didn't work. It still hurt. By the time I got home, it was killing me. There's that killing thing again. I gotta get rid of that. <laughs> but it doesn't mean that it's a failure. It means you're constructing a habit of positivity that you accept that you are your main healer. As we get used to sending this energy to the place that is out of balance, that has pain or weakness in it, we get used to living this way. We get used to helping ourselves with our minds and helping ourselves to heal wounded thoughts, wounded memories by not shaming and blaming ourselves or anyone else does not mean that we're in denial. You don't have to go over it every single day, but we do because now we're stuck in a loop. And of course, what do we call that? Trauma, of course. And everybody has variations of trauma. But when we sit, we're not going over trauma. We're not reminding ourselves of shaming and blaming ourselves and other people. This is not the time. So when you sit for 10 minutes, really, it's so hard to sit for longer than that unless you have a practice already. You're helping yourself to have this practice of just being able to be quiet and to breathe love, compassion, understanding, peace. Any of these words are all of them. To areas that are not receiving and sending light like they could. So any condition that you have can feel better. And over time, it helps us not to degenerate quite so quickly. Now, if you're out and about, and all of a sudden you start to feel like back here, there's tension back here, there's here, there's here, your upper. So the jaw, the neck, and the shoulders all have a very interesting kind of relationship with one another. And this can clench, and this is clenching. This is clenching your shoulders. I'm exaggerating so you could see it. But if you saw me walk around like this, you would know something's not right, right there, right? So... We all have to, some people have this now where they're born, you know, like this too. So even a person who has something that they brought in with them can benefit from teaching our own self to sit quietly and send love through our body. Because all the thoughts that we've been thinking about, this hurts so bad and, and all the shaming and blaming that goes with it also goes to that infected area. So you know me, I, I don't have any sort of quick fix. I'm dedicated to the long haul. A little bit every day. That adds up to, here's my magic wand. I put everything into it, all my money and everything. I'm going to make sure to see if this works. And then I don't use my mind to, to go with me and to cooperate with me. No. That's too much of a high and a big old low. I've had enough of those to where I'm like, okay, no, 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 no. I'm emotional enough. I don't need more roller coasters in my life. <laughs> Nor do I want them. <laughs> I can feel deeply without being on a roller coaster ride. <laughs> it's about learning to feel it. So if you've had a disagreement with somebody and you walk away from them, Get in the habit of feeling your body. Where did that disagreement lodge? Don't look at them and say, they put this in you. Because they can do that too. No, 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 no. You look at yourself, 
feel it in there and start to send peace to yourself. You won't want to. Mm -mm, you won't. You'll want to stay angry <laughs> because anger gives us a feeling of power. But after you practice peace for a while, you feel empowered because you know you have control over you and the other person does not. Not only do they don't have permission to try to control you, but they, their efforts are futile. Because when you practice peace, other people's efforts to make you feel bad don't work because of your practice. The practice protects you. It empowers you. It sends light to all those places in your body that get wounded whenever we have a disagreement. And much worse, of course. So we all have stories. And all those stories are locked in our bodies. Because our mind lives right now in this body. So this body is related to every single thought that I have ever thought in any other life. It's with me. If I have a seed right here, inside of it is DNA. And DNA will take it all the way back and we can discover if it was around in the time of the dinosaurs. Nothing goes away. But with that premise, everything can be changed. So if you're starting here and it's, you feel like it's way back here, you keep practicing and everything will open up in this lifetime and the future because you still have future lifetimes to go through. Unless you achieve life, and unless you achieve enlightenment in this lifetime, I don't want to take that away from you. <laughs> know that it's there, but in case you know that boat doesn't sail for you <laughs> or me, <laughs> we're also preparing those seeds for the future, for our future bodies, our future incarnations, our future capabilities. You all know what I do for a living. That is from other lifetimes. It's highly unusual. It's not the norm. <laughs> People don't start at 12 going, where's my tarot cards? <laughs> it's not the norm. Where did that come from? Did it come from my genetics? That's the history of my body. But the history of me includes many bodies, many events, many situations. And they've all come together in this particular body. So we all have tendencies towards certain things that how we love, how we, if, if we have deep prejudices and biases, those things can even be older than our body and we carry them with us. People who have very, very deep seated prejudices, biases, uh, things that, that are on more on the, uh, pardon me, hateful side, they get lodged in the body too. And if people that were suffering from that, if they were here, I would tell them the same thing. No time for shaming or blaming of yourself or others. In order to get out of those really deep, ugly thoughts, we have to learn to be peaceful as an individual. And one of the ways that we can teach our mind is to take care of our body in a peaceful way. I'm not talking about eating and, and drinking and walking and exercising. That's for another conversation. This is the, the healing through mental energy, which is soul energy. It didn't originate in the brain because it's also for the brain. This kind of energy comes from the mind, from the soul. It's a love for one's own self, regard for one's own self. And as that permeates through our mind, it moves into our brain and it begins to send that vibration through our bodies. And we can be better. We can feel better. There are people who have intense pain. For them to feel better, if they can have more peace in their mind, 
oh my God, that could be a lot. For those of us who have all this kind of what we call normal uh, tenseness and situations that are going on through us, we can feel so much better. And as we feel better, we have more energy. We have more mental energy. We have deeper energy. Our bodies are healthier than they were the moment before we did our practice. So it's about understanding. Uh, we can go really, really deep into this and um, we're going to in another class, but I want you to know that, you know, each part of the body uh, is, is part of the mind. It's part of the mind, which is why thoughts that um, can get stuck in your hips, these thoughts are different than thoughts that can get stuck in back of your neck. It's still this feeling of um, tensing up, shutting down, but it's a little bit different, the quality of the thoughts. But I'm saying this to you so that you can see that our nerves move through our whole body. And as we're thinking, it goes, all of that energy, those thoughts touch and affect our bodies. And we want to have a strong, health, healthy body because, because. <laughs> so it's important to see the relationship between the mind and the body. Everything matters. So, anger is one of these things that makes us feel powerful when we're in it. When we feel anger, anger makes us feel very powerful. <clears throat> the way that it rushes through the body, the way that it makes the head want to kind of do this, and you know, you can feel the tension in your muscles. Yeah. It gives us the feeling of power because anger is also connected to fear. When we get really afraid, very similar kind of thing happens. Every motion that my body makes comes from my mind, moves through my body, who sends that message to the rest of me. So, it gives us an illusion of being powerful in that moment, because especially if you're afraid, you're afraid the other person's going to win the argument. It could be that big, that it could be that level of fear. Now they're winning. <laughs> you see, when we start to do that, anger and fear are similar. They're not the same, but they're similar and they feed one another. They're like a bad relationship. They're not helping each other at all. <laughs> but you can feel it move through your body. So what you're teaching yourself to do, I'm teaching myself to do, is to be able to feel that so that I can help myself because I want to have empowerment over myself and help myself not feel that so that I'm not victimized by my own thoughts or the thoughts of others. To help it to run through me, to run through me. There's different techniques that you can do. You can practice another one, which is really helping yourself to like feel like your your soul. Like if you think think of it, it's sort of like it's like a an energy that you can feel on the top of your head. You see, this chakra up here is um, I don't have a Buddha right at the moment. If you look at the little statues of Buddha, you'll see where his head is in these little knots. You know, it's like his hair is in little knots. That has to do with the crown chakra. That's why that he has that there. So the crown chakra only opens up as we evolve spiritually. So when you take your hand and you move it over the top of your head, you can feel that energy. Be really, really quiet. Can you feel it? It's like a, I don't know the right words for it. It's like a, it's like a, like a little bit of magnet. Like if you have a magnet, that energy, it's kind of like that. It's 
very light. That's you. You're bigger than your body. Your energy is bigger than your body. Did you feel it? Yeah. That's you. That's you. That's the eternal you. And then when you touch your head, that's a whole different feeling. <laughs> that's your body. This is you. So now what we're doing is we're meditating on feeling that, being aware of it. And even if you do that, you know, just run your hand over there so that you can feel it and remember that my body and I are in relationship with each other, but they're not the same. They're in a deep and abiding relationship with one another, but they are not the same. And you want to feel this energy so that you can remember that this energy is who's in charge. And it moves through the brain and then it moves through all of these nerve endings and affects the body. So we're going to do like, like a, just a little bit again, just, just centering, being quiet, just breathing. But first, what you want to do is remember to feel. And you can feel that magnet. And then once you can, you can put your hands however you want. I'm closing my eyes. You can or not. Now feel that energy atop your head. You might, you might experience a feeling of like a little bit of some, feels like something might be crawling, but nothing is. It's not a bad feeling. But it'll have like a, feeling of maybe itchiness or just tingling because you're focusing there and it's reminding you that you are eternal. I want you to like take that beautiful energy that hovers. I say it's hovering, but it's throughout your whole body, but you can feel it on the top of your head. Now, Bring in that love, bring in that purity, bring in that light and feel it moving through the top of your head. Really be in touch with the top of your head and let it move into you, filling your whole head, your brain, your beautiful, magnificent brain Feel that light moving in there, energizing you, wanting to think higher and deeper thoughts, moving through the back of your eyes, moving from the inside out through your nose, through your ears, through your mouth. Feel it moving all through you, moving through your tongue, introducing you to your throat and moving that light down your throat into your neck, moving swiftly, harmlessly, magnificently atop your shoulders and down your arms and into your fingertips, moving out, flushing anything that's negative away, leaving you so empowered, light, love, depth, integrity, moving from your neck down the front and back, through your chest, through your lungs. It makes you want to breathe in so deep. Into your belly, through all of your organs, down your back, down your spine. You can feel it moving down your spine which makes you even feel it again in your head. Gives me chills. Down your sacrum. That low back is saying, feed me light. It's been dark down here. Pour that light into your low back. 
through your hips once again, really moving swiftly down through your thighs, penetrating your knees down into your calves and all the way to your heels and toes. Now, remember that this light began from outside of you. Today, you're feeling it and knowing that it always was from the inside out. Because everything is from the inside out. Every thought that you have turns into an action performed by the body. Everything comes from the inside out. Feeling the energy atop your head is to remind you that it emanates from deep, deep inside of you and it moves all around you. And our thoughts, our words and our actions all have impact on one another. And the thoughts of healing, the thoughts of love, the thoughts of generating peace do really work. Feel empowered. Feel your own inner healer. Do not focus on why. No pictures. Just shh. Just rest, glorious rest, resting the mind, glorious rest. Finally, join yourself with me and let us breathe in deeply, very deeply. Breathe at will, very deeply. Let yourself be so soothed by breathing in long, deep, slow breaths of air. Um, and healing. I am consciously healing. I am strengthening my mind, my brain, my body, and my beautiful life. I am. I am. I am. Very kindly, if you wish, place your hands together. And know that when you do that, it looks like a seed. And you can see the relationship. When we do this, it is an outward display, if you will, of my mind, my soul, my body are one. I am all my parts are together. I am a human at rest, at peace. I am a human, strong and kind. 
I am. I am. I am. And from me, this healing energy I offer out to help to alleviate the suffering of all sentient beings. May all the beings in all the worlds be happy. Peace. 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 Finally, breathe in. Breathe out. Take long, deep breaths in and long, deep breaths out until you feel like you want to return to us. I'm so happy that we were able to practice together. I hope over this next month, you find a way to make this practice your very own. Your very own. And keep coming back to peace. Remember our word, which is freedom. And our saboteur that we're working on is indecisiveness. Slow down. Thank you so much for being here today. I look forward to seeing you. Peace be with you. Namaste. Mm -hmm.